Okay, question 22 on the math subject GRE practice test. Uh, fun fact about this problem. Of all the test takers who saw this problem, only 50% of them got it correct, which is a lower success rate than any problem we've seen so far in these videos, and actually lower than the success rate on any problem until you get to 33 on the test. Now, I find that pretty surprising because I think this is a fairly easy question, at least compared to some of the other stuff we've done. So there must be something really tricky in here that's causing people to get it incorrect. The annoying thing about this problem is we have this triangle and they just give us a bunch of information about the sides. Couldn't just draw the triangle for me, huh? So let's see, triangle ABC has sides 6, 8, and 12. Well, you certainly don't have to draw this to scale. If you can make acute angles acute and obtuse angles obtuse, it can make these problems a little bit easier. So one thing that you might notice is that this is just a scaled up version of a 3, 4, 6 triangle. Right, if I double each of these side lengths, I get these side lengths. And you might be like, a 3, 4, 6 triangle? I've never heard of that. Right, but maybe you've heard of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. So what that means is if you have a triangle with side lengths 3, 4, and 5, you get a right triangle where the length of the hypotenuse is 5. So if I kind of think about starting out with this right triangle, instead of having this triangle where maybe this is 3 and this is 4 and this is 5, in order to increase this side length while keeping this side length the same, I'd have to kind of rotate this point to be somewhere out here. What I'm saying is this is a decent approximation of a 3, 4, 6 triangle. Note this angle here is obtuse. Oh, right, but we don't want a 3, 4, 6 triangle. We want a 6, 8, 12 triangle. So I can double the length of all of these sides, zoom out a little bit, and get this triangle here. Let's see, BC was the longest of these three sides, and AB was the shortest, so maybe I throw B over here, C up here, and this is A. What I'm told is to let P be a point on side AB, so P is somewhere in here, such that AP equals four. Okay, again, doesn't need to be the scale, but if this entire length is six, four would be two thirds of the way over here. So I don't know, roughly in here is P. This side length in red here is four. I'm then told to let Q be a point on side AC, so somewhere in here, such that angles APQ and ACB are congruent. Okay, so let's see the angle at P defined by A and Q. So we're talking about the angle that I'll have right here defined by this A and Q that's somewhere on this side, has to be the same as the angle at C defined by A and B. Oh, nice, that one's already drawn, right? Angle A, C, B is this guy right here, which appears to be, I don't know, like 30 degrees maybe? It's certainly not exactly 30 degrees, but by keeping that number in mind, I can draw angle A, P, Q and keep things somewhat to scale. So if I want this to be roughly 30 degrees, it looks like, mm, I don't know, something like this. What I'm saying is point Q would be somewhere around here. What I'm being asked is what is the length of line segment PQ? In other words, what is X in this picture? I don't love having four up here. Maybe I'll toss it down here and scratch this out and you'll let that slide. Okay, so what we have here in red and in purple are congruent triangles. How do I know they're congruent? Because all of their angle measures are the same. How do I know all their angle measures are the same? Well, because this angle is the same as this angle and the angle at A here shows up in both triangles and if I have two sets of congruent angles because the sum of the interior angles in any triangle has to be 180, I'm guaranteed to have three sets of congruent angles. What I'm saying is this is the same as this. When you're dealing with congruent triangles like this, it often makes your life a lot easier to kind of reflect and rotate one of them so that they're kind of oriented the same. So maybe I can really quickly redraw my purple triangle. Not terrible, huh? And then I can redraw my red triangle, but kind of orient it so that this angle is up in the top right, and this angle is down on the bottom right, and this angle is down on the bottom left. Note that I was careful to have my green angle in the bottom left in both pictures, my brown angle in the bottom right in both pictures, and this angle, which for some reason is blue in this triangle and red in this triangle, maybe I should have made this blue, up in the top right of these triangles. I know that side length AP has length four, and what I'm trying to figure out is the length of PQ, this thing here, all of a sudden it's really obvious, right? This triangle is just twice as big as this triangle, so X must be equal to six. All oh, right, but you got really lucky that this happened to be exactly twice this. What if this were eight and this were five? It's totally fine, you can just set up ratios. I can create an equation, picking any two corresponding sides. So maybe like eight over four is one of the sides, and then 12 over X is the other side. Solve this equation for X and you're done. 2 equals 12 over x. If you can't already see the answer, multiply the x up here, divide by 2, and you get x is 12 halves, aka 6. Maybe I should have made this x over 12 as 4 over 8 when I set up my ratios. Whatever, it really doesn't matter. The point is, the length of side PQ, in other words, what I'm calling x, is 6, and 6 is answer D.
If you were able to get that right, you did better than half the people that saw this on a test. Well, that's got to be good for your confidence, huh?